Okay, so here goes. Babies are completely different than big people, all right? They breathe very, very fast. <laughs> and then they stop. <clears throat> and then make that noise. And that's called periodic breathing and it's completely normal and it's part of their uh, immature neurologic system. So don't worry about it if you're hearing that. As they get fatter and fatter, their cheeks will get fatter, their necks will get fatter, and their little neck will kind of fall onto their chest and give them a double chin. And you'll start to hear them make little piggy noises. <laughs> It's a little bit later in life, but some babies, especially my nine pounders, will do it right away. So if that happens, again, don't worry about it. It sounds like they're congested, but it's just everything is really weak, but they should not grunt to breathe. <laughs> Any grunting that lasts longer than 15, 20 seconds, let your doctor know right away because it could be an issue either in their heart or in their lungs, and it could be major dangerous. So grunting to poop, as they push to poop out, that's completely normal, but grunting to breathe is not normal. They will hiccup constantly, and hiccups to me is a great sign, because when they hiccup, that means their tummy has been filled, and that tummy has now pushed on their diaphragm and caused them to have hiccups, and that's completely normal, so it's a sign of a nice, fat, healthy, uh, gaining weight, hopefully, baby. So don't worry about baby's hiccups. You don't have to stick a thread on their top of their forehead or, or give them water or anything. Just let them hiccup. They're perfectly happy because they're nice and full. They will breathe with their bellies. So when you see them breathing, their belly will go up and down and that's completely normal. But they should not breathe with their nostrils. Their nostrils should not flare, go up and down. And they should not breathe with the muscles in between their ribs. And if that's happening, then let us know right away. Their heart rate is a lot faster than us. You'll feel like a little flapping hummingbird in there. That's completely normal. We talked about their tone and the fact that when they breathe, that tone in their trachea is lower. So they sometimes will make little noises but their muscle tone is also lower. They're kind of floppy. They hold themselves in the fetal position. If you put something in their hand, they'll kind of hold on to it, but they should move all extremities exactly the same. So arms and legs, and they should all move. They have a startle called reflex called the Moro. So if you lay, go lay them down or when you pick them, something, they'll kind of go like this. And that's completely normal part of their neurologic system. And they sometimes have something called clonus on their legs. So when, they, when you push their little foot, it'll shake like this. And that's completely normal what you want to do to, to make sure it's normal is just when they're shaking, just hold on to it. And if the shaking stops, then don't worry about it. Even though they have low tone, they can move. They kind of wiggle like a caterpillar. So never leave them on a chair, never leave them on a bed. You'll find them on the floor nine times out of 10. Biggest questions I get other than hiccups, honestly, and sneezing, I forgot that one. They sneeze to clean out their nose. Uh, the other question that we get is how do I know I'm feeding my baby enough? And that's one of the reasons that we come in so frequently because it's really hard to tell, especially if you're breastfeeding your baby. Now, breastfeeding is absolutely the best way to go and I always tell parents it's the hardest thing that you're ever gonna do especially on the moms so make yourself a nest put a chair make sure that you have a cup of water make sure you have your remote control or your music make sure you have that bassinet right next to wherever you're sitting so that when you finish breastfeeding you could put the baby down to establish breastfeeding especially those first two weeks you just got to put them on the boob there's nothing else that's going to make it happen unless they actually latch and suck from you you can pump and feed it's really hard to maintain that over the long term so if you are having trouble call the la leche league call your lactation consultant call grandma grandma or a friend who's done it and see what you can need to do. Changing your position, using a nipple shield, feeding them a little bit beforehand and then putting them on the boob, using the little straw thing to help them get formula and milk so that they are not so upset, they're not getting things. There's a thousand and one ways of going about it. There's nothing that's perfect. It just you have to figure it out between you and your baby and your family. Let's say for whatever reason you don't have, you can't do exclusive breast milk, you're either supplementing or giving formula. If you're doing formula, then they should drink enough that they always leave a little bit left in the bottle. And if they're sucking the bottle dry, then that means they need more. So you start with half an ounce, and then if they suck dry half an ounce, you go to one ounce, and if they suck dry one ounce, you go to two ounces, etc., etc. Some babies are what's called cluster feeders. They eat and eat and eat and eat, and then they sleep, and then they eat and eat and eat and eat, and then they sleep. And some babies are right on schedule. Every two to three hours, they need to eat. Whatever your baby is, the biggest thing you want to establish this first couple weeks of life is that day is for waking up and nighttime is for sleeping. So if they're sleeping more than two and a half hours during the day, 
wake them up. Get them naked. Put your cold hands on top of their body and they'll shake and they'll wake up. And you really want to do that those first two weeks because you need to establish your sleep also. And just know that if you can't, if you're falling apart, if you're so exhausted, it's okay. Pump or breastfeed them and then give them to somebody that's going to take care of them while you get your rest and then come back and start again the next day that's why god gives us sunrises to remind us every day is new we can just start again so we feed them on demand we're teaching them night and days liquid comes in liquid comes out and it should be yellow seedy the color of mustard and the consistency of cottage cheese i worry if the poop is firm. So if you got the consistency of cream cheese or firmer, that's a worry. I worry if the poop is white, black, or red. I don't worry if they haven't pooped in a day, two days, or six days. The frequency of the poop does not matter to me. It's the consistency. Breastfed babies tend to poop more than formula-fed babies. When they're a combination, it can be anything. Formula-fed babies may move to poop only once or twice a day. If your baby is having poops that are a different color than yellow, if they have rashes, colic, and fussiness, talk to your doctor and have them check for milk protein sensitivity. Quite common in infants, especially when they're formula-fed, and it's one of the first things to check if you're having issues with your baby's feeding. Spit up can be normal. Most babies do spit up because they have a muscle down at the bottom of their esophagus that's quite weak and in addition to that they're laying down to sleep and they're laying down to poop. So pooping is really really hard. They can't really, they've never done it when they were inside of you. So when they go to poop and they're fussy and they're moving, massage their belly, sit them up, bring those legs to their chest and to help them bring it out. Not all babies burp. So the babies that suck air, so they're greedy and gluttonous and they're mad at you because you didn't know that five minutes ago they were gonna be hungry, those babies tend to burp a lot. The babies that are tend to be quieter, that have a good seal, especially if they're breastfed or if you're using that Dr. Brown's bottle that tends to decrease the air in there, those babies don't tend to burp a lot. If they don't burp, don't spend hours trying to get it done. One of the ways that you can try to make them burp is if you just pat on their tummy down in here and then you flip them around and put them on your chest, sometimes that makes them burp. If even that doesn't work, then just put them down. Lay them down on their back to sleep. Always on their back for long sleeps, but they can have time on your tummy if they're laying on your chest, at least initially in that first month. I want you to be watching them if they're on their tummy. Why? Because they can fall asleep at any point. And remember, we already talked that their breathing was immature. So if they are asleep on their tummy and they stop that breathing, they may not continue. And that's what we call SIDS or crib death. So make sure that they're sleeping on their back face up, and you're moving their head back and forth, okay? So move it to the right sometimes, move it to the left. Like when you hold them on your shoulders, put them on one shoulder and then the other, hold them this way and that way. That's not only good for the baby because their head is going to have uh, pressure on different parts, but it's good for you because if you hold your baby always on one side, you may end up with chronic low back or upper back pain. So we talked about spitting up and I got off tangent, sorry. So when they spit up, um, they may spit up just little, little, inklings of food that comes on out occasionally you'll get a forceful one and that's completely normal some babies spit up every single feed and if that's happening what you want to watch for is you want to make sure that it's not progressive today they spit up three times tomorrow 13 the next day 33 then worry if it's projectile across the room so today they spit up to here tomorrow to here the next day to here and then the next day it hits you on the face then worry and talk to your doctor because there can be things in the intestines that can cause emergencies and those would be signs of that. So we talked about grunting to poop, which is completely normal, but not grunting to breathe. The umbilical cord nowadays, at least in our hospital, we have to do nothing afterwards except keep it dry. Just don't give your baby a bath until that cord falls off and watch for goopiness or redness uh, and keep that diaper underneath it. Watch for jaundice. In babies, we see it in their eyes. When they have jaundice in their eyes, I don't worry. If it's on their face, I don't worry. If it's on their chest, I don't worry. If it's on their bellies, I start to worry. And if it's on their legs, then I really worry. And it all depends on what age they are. So any yellowness of their skin tone or concerns, talk to your doctor because that actually has lots of different gradients and it depends on where the yellowness is and how old your baby is and how well they're feeding and how well they're pooping. So that's something that you definitely need to talk to the doctor directly about. I try to avoid passing 
pacifiers. Pacifiers mess up their ears and so you end up with more ear infections. It, they got them in their mouth when they're toddlers so they're not talking. Uh, it ruins their teeth. Well, it doesn't completely ruin them. They can fix it, but it starts to push their teeth forward. So little things that you do now are going to have lots of consequences down the road. Now you can always change. You can always modify the way you parent, but be careful about the habits that you're establishing now because they will, they will have ramifications down the road. When babies are being breastfed and after birth, there's a big load of hormones from the mom. And so everything in the plumbing is set up so they can get boobs, they can get periods if they're girls, if they're boys, they can bo get boobs also. It's not permanent, they're not gonna grow into double Ds, they're, you know, it's not a big deal, but it can happen. And the boobs could even produce a little bit of milk. Uh, so if those things happen, if you're a little worried, talk to the doctor, but it can be normal. Uh, penises, they actually work, they stand up, and you'll see yeah. that. Uh, scrotums feel very, very big and very tight and last up to 18 months of age. Uh, you have to watch for hernias and the doctor will examine for that. They should pee a lot. Uh, if you're peeing a lot, then that means you're well hydrated, you're drinking a lot. So we want to see lots of pee, we love to see lots of poo. You can take your baby out, especially if they're jaundice, the doctor will talk to you about what you have to do as far as treatment. If you're going to do any sort of sunlight though, you want to be in indirect light. So you don't want actually the sun touching their skin because their skin is very, very sensitive. And that lasts for the first six to nine months of life. So you really want to avoid a lot of direct sun contact for newborn babies. And what you want to do is just indirect light. Uh, and if you want to go out uh, you know, for walks or whatever, do it early in the morning and later at night. Babies don't like changes in temperature so if you live in a cooler area or like here in Florida your baby's born in one of the three days that it's cold in Florida then when you go out if it's cooler if it's 50 60 and your house is 75 then put a blanket over them so that they maintain their temperature. Baby's internal temperature should always be lower than 100.4. Any temperature higher than 100.4 which is 38 degrees Celsius is an emergency and immediately requires a phone call or a trip to the emergency room if they're under the age of two months. So please give us a call if that happens. Only check the fever if the baby's doing something weird. They're not eating, they're crying, they're fussy, they're irritable, then check a temp. Not in the ear, not in the mouth, not on the forehead. You got it in the tush. Rectal temperature is necessary. I like to recommend it for babies six months and below. And all families who have newborns, if you don't have one already, please order a thermometer. You need to have it in your house. Their skin we talked about being really sensitive to sunlight, but the other thing is that they have a lot of rashes and their skin is really, really porous. Normal baby rashes, milia, are little white dots that happen usually on the face. Parents ask me sometimes, could I pop it because it looks like a pimple? No, don't pop it. It goes away on its own. The other things are red dots, could be erythema toxicum and acne. Your doctor will talk to you and let you know what those are. You can get red, kind of more permanent looking dots over the eyes and in the back of the neck, and those are completely normal. They do go away. Uh, you may notice them still around the age of two when your baby cries, the little, little area will get red when they have a temper tantrum, uh, and the one in the back of the neck usually goes away by the time they're five to six years of age. There are some uh, darker birthmarks, bluish, that look like bruises that happen on the back and on the low, on the legs and on the, uh, sometimes even on the arms. I've seen it down in here. And those can be normal. They also usually go away by the time the baby's five to six years of age. I don't use any fragrances on my babies for the first six months of age. I don't like any perfumes. I don't want anything in their detergents. So read your labels carefully. They have like all free and clear, tide free, cheer free. Uh, even Kirkland brand has like a free, uh, and I don't use fabric softener and I don't use any of the sheets of fabric softener because all of those retain a perfume that can give your baby rashes. I love the Vanny Light and the Vanny Cream products, but read your labels. You can lotion the babies, especially if they tend to dry skin. Some parents get worried because around day four or five, their skin starts to completely peel away. And what I say is when they were inside of mommy, they were surrounded by water and so they actually were kind of like fish. And then they come out and now they're surrounded by air so they become human. You have to go transition from that fish skin to that human skin. So that requires it peeling completely off. Completely normal, doesn't bother the babies. But if you've got a photo shoot and you want them to look beautiful, then just put some hypoallergenic lotion all over them and call it a day. We bathe them when the cord has fallen off. Babies don't get dirty. They don't go out in the sun, they don't sweat. 
They don't play in sandboxes. So if they love to bathe, bathe them every day. If they hate a bath, bathe them once a week. You can just use a washcloth for the other times. What's the goal for the next uh, for this next month? What you're going to be doing is you're establishing your feeds. You're trying to establish that daytime is for waking up and eating and nighttime is for sleeping. What we want to do is make sure that you rest and you have enough rest and that you keep your baby healthy. If people are coming to visit you, please don't let them hold the baby or until they wash their hands. Try not to, I'm old fashioned. Don't go to Publix and Costco with their baby. D divide and conquer, have your stuff delivered. Keep it at home at least in the first couple months until you really build that immune system. We talked about the dangers, working hard to breathe, temperatures, pooping hard balls or poop the weird colors and make sure that we keep sleeping on the back and never sleep with your baby. Make sure they sleep next to you but not beside you in the same bed. Okay, that's a lot of information and that's why I hope that you listen to this one kind of over and over again. I promise you, it will get easier. Uh, I promise you, as long as you do everything with love, then you really can't mess it up. If you have questions that aren't covered in this talk, make sure that you bring them to your doctor. We love to hear those questions because it just makes us think and it makes our relationship better. So good luck in the next couple weeks and see you soon for the two-month visit. Thanks.